All right, we do have quorum. Um, <clears throat> I think it would be fine to, to wait a few more minutes. <clears throat> Is my microphone working, guys? Yes, it yep, is. Hi, Johnny. Yep, we can Hi, hear Johnny. you. Wow. I got this Zoom thing working on the first try. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? <laughs> I'm, sure, I, I'm sure it'll fail before we get finished. I mean, Jim here is apparently stuck in Windows 95, so, like, you're better off than he is. Actually, no, that's Windows Millennium Edition. I recognize that meet Windows Media Player icon. What are you doing in Windows Millennium Edition? He's in the future. Torturing other Microsoft people. <laughs> <clears throat> Windows 96, man. They, uh, they, they don't necessarily like to admit that Windows Millennium exists, so I drop this screenshot in there in the background from time to time just to see who gets twitchy. Nice. Hey, Mike. Hello. Hey, Mike. Hey, Mike. Long time no hear or see. Oh, really? Yeah. I got here. Uh... I mean, I've been at. Wait, who, who am I? Talking to. See? <laughs> You've already forgotten me. Oh, I see. It's Neil. Okay. Sorry, I'm on my phone and I can't see um ah. I can't see all the faces at one time. All right, I think I have all the guests added to the agenda here. Um, and everybody got the notice that this is being recorded. And if you've got a problem with that dropout. <clears throat> uh, we have three directors um, who are not yet present. Um, but uh, at least one of them said they probably would not be here. Yeah, um, the only people that can annotate or edit the agenda are those that are on the uh, the access list. So if if you have a uh, a HackMD account, I can add you to that group if you're a director. <clears throat> Meanwhile, let's go ahead and get started. Um, in the absence of our chair, I. I'm willing to serve as chair. If anyone wants to take that over for me, speak now or forever hold your breath. All right, so uh, welcome to all of our guests. Thank you so much for attending. Hold on, I've got two more people getting asking to be admitted. All right. <clears throat> So the first, um, the first item on our agenda is the previous minutes. These were all already approved on the board mailing list. Um, but if anyone has any comments or edits, additions to those minutes, please let me know. And we can modify those. Did we schedule the IRC office hours that are mentioned there? We didn't. Um, and I'm trying to remember, I was working on that right before I left. Um, right, we, we made, a, uh, we made a, a doodle pool to see what time what worked for people. And um, that, was, uh, that was responded to by about half of the direct directors. By the time I had left, I will make a note to, uh, to check that right after this meeting and try and get that scheduled tomorrow. <clears throat> um, do we have any other comments regarding the, the minute regarding last month's meeting? 
All right, the next item on our agenda is regarding the announcements of the uh, research and academia offering and anything else regarding the CentOS 8 end of life. Um, we did publish the, uh, the page that we drafted um, with uh, details of how the end of life was going to be handled based on the discussion on the mailing list. And that is live on the website. It's linked from the, the CentOS 8 download page. I don't think it's linked from anywhere else at this moment. <clears throat> All right, hearing no more comments, I'll move on to our first um, decision work item. Yeah, ju just to confirm, we can close this yes. one. I think there's nothing else to say on this ongoing discussion, right? I think uh, we are at the point where we can remove it from yeah, the agenda. I, I think because, that that's, yeah. Okay. I think that that's complete. I don't think there's anything left to do there. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Everything else that we have to discuss is related to issues that are open in the issue tracking system. And uh, so I'll, I'll move on to the first one of those. And um, this is regarding the, the uh, mention in our, in our bylaws that require Red Hat to hold a majority of seats on the board of directors. Um, I, uh, what is discussed in this ticket is uh, that, that uh, we want to remove that requirement. And so I'd like to put that proposal out there as a motion for the board to, uh, to vote on. And so specifically, we're simply going to remove the requirement that Red Hat hold a majority of seats. Um, the, uh, the Red Hat liaison seat remains, but there would be no other requirement for Red Hat membership on the board of directors. <clears throat> I support this motion. If I can interject only briefly, um, speaking as the Red Hat liaison, we are in favor of this, but I'd also like to add some clarity. It, the requirement as it reads today is actually only that Red Hat employees be the majority, not that Red Hat hold the majority. As you know, all board members act in their own stead with the exception of me, the Red Hat liaison. So this just is removing the requirement that more than 50% of the board be employed by Red Hat. I mean, I, I think that is in practice a distinction without a difference because if you are mandating and a particular employer uh, must hold the majority control, which again, to be clear, Rich is asking to get rid of it. And I'm been, I, as a not important like person who's on the sideline here being a guest, I'm in favor of this, I like that. But like when you when you encode a rule like that, you're you're implicitly stating that your 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 employer actually matters and gives power over the decisions in in the organization. You know whether or not that is practically true is irrelevant. The policy itself declares that this is true. And that was one that, of the reasons that was given in our in our discussion. Um, for that those would of you, be true. That would be true except Neil that um, the way that the, the laws are written, any one person saying no is a no vote for everybody. E every individual board member, if any individual board member says no, that's a no vote. So it doesn't matter who you work for. Although I'm, I'm, I'm uh, perfectly fine with removing that requirement. I, I never thought it should be there in the first place, Rich. So if, if we're voting, I'm a plus one to remove it. But we already had in place the capability for anybody who is a, a board member to say no. And that's a no for everybody. With the only exception being the Red Hat liaison has the capability. Red Hat still has the capability of forcing things to happen. Um, because the Red Hat liaison has the overall ability under certain specific conditions to do certain things. That's all in the bylaws. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm perfectly fine with this. So I'm a plus one. So do we have any objections to uh, passing this with, what's the, what's the term? Uh, uh, I'm drawing a blank on the, on the uh, parliamentary term. Yeah, uh, unanimous. unanimous, 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 unanimous. There we go. Hearing no objection, 
the motion carries and I will take care of updating the bylaws on the uh, on the website. All right, and I have taken an action on that. <clears throat> Wow, that feels uh, that feels momentous. All right, moving along. Um, the The next item on the agenda is is something that that we've already had come up in two meetings. Um, this is uh, branding and artifact naming of variants. Uh, there is a draft messaging that has been proposed. Um, is this something that we want to uh, we want to approve here or do we want to run this by the CentOS develop mailing list or is there are there other steps here? Yeah, I'd love to run it past the DEVEL list. I'm okay. pretty happy with it. Yeah. But if the community has got some ideas on how we can make it better, that sounds great to me. I had just this comment on the life cycle. I think we should just uh, put a note on that if the spin are getting old on the are unmaintained, we will remove them from the mirror network. Uh, I think it's nice uh, to to add something like that. And Fedora did the same. With uh, they have a process. I think we can the leave the process line. to the SIG. Sorry. It's it's so in Fedora we have this process called the Keep Alive. And at the beginning of every Fedora development cycle, uh, we uh, Mr. Program Manager Ben Cotton goes and files a bug against everybody, asking if they want the if they want to confirm the spin being made for uh, you know for that Fedora release. Uh, in the CentOS case, that process doesn't exactly one-to-one -one map because I don't know if three years is a, a three to five years is a is a great window to wait. But we could certainly do something along the lines of you know maybe every point release yeah. time uh, frame or whatever like six months or to, uh, to check we, in. My, my proposal was for the for the for the SIGs. So I think that's a good watershed. Oh, yeah. We already did that early. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I've already but, added a note to the draft to this end because I saw your message this morning, Thomas. So I okay, think thank you. Uh, I think that should be covered there. I'm perfectly fine having this posted on the belt and having it there for comments before we finalize it. Yeah. Right now in stream, every every release gets its own ISO set, right? So right. We're doing we're doing ISOs every release, right? We're doing a release every uh, update right now. That's true. But I think we flush out the mirrors of the old ones and only keep those stored in the composes tree. And and only the, the newest one actually syncs out to the mirror network. Um, we'd probably, and I'm not going to prescribe implementation here, but we probably want to do the same thing for for SIG media content as well, because those get pretty pretty hefty. Yeah, I think that's something we can figure out with the infra when when it becomes a problem. All right. If there's no further discussion here, we'll take that to the mailing list for those for those comments. Um, and and thank you, Neil, for your for your input there. Um, the next item, I'm not sure what we need to do here. This is kind of a, uh, uh, regarding removing permissions from former directors. Um, it, this has been sort of in a someone should status for a while. Um, it's not clear to me what former directors have access to that they shouldn't, and I'm not sure how to obtain that information. <laughs> is this something we need to ask the infra folks to, to look into, or, or the former directors, or what? What's the path here? Maybe asking for directors to document what they have access so, to. So, um, the only the only former director that had any computer access to anything was was Ralph, right? And certainly the infra team can. Uh, um, make changes to that stuff. If, if we just put in a ticket, if, if you want that to happen, 
I, I can verify that Ralph still has access to some machines right now by looking on the machines that I'm on right now. Right. And the question that I asked at the time was, is that tied to his merit as an individual participant in the project, or is it specifically tied to his director seat? Because if people are still volunteering to do stuff, I know Ralph isn't, but, but in the general case, you know, making that distinction seems important. I think well, that's a legacy thing um, in the same way that I probably shouldn't have access to a lot of the infra stuff anyhow. Like I'm, I'm not logging in and doing day-to-day -day update type stuff. So I'm fine with a minimal privilege set and we can either act as, you know, directors and direct, or we can do. And some people like Johnny are double duty. But to answer your question on how we can get it taken away, um, that stuff is set up as a policy and Ansible on the infra team, and it gets pushed to every Linux server right now. And it's a simple thing to take that out. So the infra team can, can make that person go away. Uh, we just need to decide how, um, how we want to control that. I think yeah. it should be on an individual basis. It's not like we have thousands of, of, we don't have thousands of people that we have to be concerned about, right? So when, it, when someone goes off the board, we can ask right away, should we take away their access or not and make it happen during that week? Then it's just a ticket and it goes away. Yeah, I think it would be easier as well. Now we move away from Google Docs and other things that require extra layer of access. And because we, we have the full control with ACMD and this kind of thing, it would be easier for us to manage at least. So I think, yeah, we are moving in the right direction and and uh, we just need to identify maybe some things outside of the infrastructure uh, that are still uh, needed, like, uh, I don't know, IRC, channel access, uh, ops, all this kind of thing. But I don't think uh, it, it's a big, big problem, but still, uh, if we can document uh, when we find a new access that we should have removed, we, we can put it somewhere in the wiki and it would be nice to just know, maybe. So Reset started an, a director onboarding doc, uh, which I found pretty useful. So I think that is probably a good place to document thing, things and places that directors should have access to uh, and things that instead are decoupled that are infra things that people may have access to but aren't necessarily tied to them, to them being a director. That document is still extremely sparse. <laughs> it's a starting point, but it's very sparse. It's a start. All right. Well, I, I don't. I don't feel like this is an urgent thing, but uh, perhaps I'll, I'll open a ticket with infrastructure, and we can remove permissions. And then, if people need it, they can ask for it back, and that's easy enough. <clears throat> um, the next item on the list is uh, number twenty-seven. Which one is that? That's the Amazon uh, yeah. CN region. So for this one, I spoke to David Duncan this yeah. morning, and he has offered to sponsor accounts and whatever is needed to make this happen. He he, he couldn't log in on GitHub Center for some reason, so he couldn't comment on the issue. So I commented on his behalf. All right, so we can leave that with him, I guess. Given an action or, or finalizing the detail with David? <clears throat> yeah, I think someone, I guess someone from Infra probably needs to sync up with him on what practically needs to be done, I guess.
All right, next item is regarding um, updating our documentation of our governance. And um, as I'm sure you all saw, I posted a first draft of this to the Devel mailing list. Um, didn't get much in the way of feedback, except that Amy offered to uh, assist in editing and updating those documents. Um, and now that we have issue number six resolved, um, I'll hopefully be moving forward with that and uh, doing the, the other side of that is the, the SIG documentation, which is also split across many web pages and um, is slightly contradictory and confusing. So that's that's what I hope to be working on next. Um, I, I don't think there's much else to say here unless anybody has any comments there. It looks fine. I mean, it's better than what we had before, which was nothing particularly useful. Um, I think, you know, the, uh, when I saw that thread come up, I was slightly surprised that nobody really had commented on it when it was put in there. But then, you know, thinking about it a bit, I guess I shouldn't be because I don't think anyone really, like most of the people within the project really understand how governance is done. And it's not like our this particular project has um, a sufficient amount of experience with it to be able to say anything meaningful um, about it. So I think the, the, the end result that occurred where you posted it to the list and nobody said anything actually makes sense upon reflection because I don't know if anyone could feel like there was anything to say about it. Sure. Um, I mean, from my perspective, just reading it, I thought it was fine. Uh, it's, it's better than what we had before, which was a confusing mess of possibly nothing and some things. Uh, and, and it's just, it, at the very least, it's a starting point and we can certainly iterate on it over time. Yeah. Like nothing is set in stone here. I certainly don't feel like it's a, a finished document. It is just a starting place. Yes. And we're, it, it's an update rather than a patch to fix specific problems. And so that tends to result in not a lot of comments because we didn't find this great problem in our governance that we're trying to address. We found a problem in our documentation and those yield very different kinds of conversations. All right, the next issue is one that has become increasingly muddled as the ticket has aged. Um, and I, I took a stab at resolving that this morning. So there's a uh, issue number three. The title of the issue has very little to do with the actual discussion that happens within the ticket itself. And I've, I've split that out into several separate issues uh, because there, there's two separate issues. One is let's take down um, cloud images that, that violate our trademark, violate our copyright, and are from weird third parties. That's half of it. The other half is let's get some official images out there. And I have split off the let's take down unauthorized issues, uh, unauthorized images. Um, one of those has been addressed by Red Hat Legal. The other three were requested this morning. And I'm tracking each one of those in a separate ticket so that I can actually close the ticket when it's resolved rather than, you know, kind of being confused as to what state we're in. Um, the other half of it regarding getting official images out there is, is also being worked on. Um, but uh, I, I, I don't have any status update on that particularly. I know that that is something that uh, Brian Stinson's team is, is involved in and that uh, Brian Axelbeard is, is talking with people on the legal side for whatever legal uh, impact there is there. Hey, uh, Rich, can I, can I chime in? Certainly. Um, yeah, is there any help that's needed on that? Because we just went through that process and I have become more intimately familiar with it than I would like to. So <laughs> if you guys 
need help with that. Um, we know the technical necessities to get that done and also the correct people that run that program at Azure um, in order to uh, facilitate that. I'm, personally, I'd love to have some of that information just for my knowledge. Me too. <laughs> I, my curiosity occasionally knows no bounds. And I'm currently very curious on what that whole process looks like. Um, yeah, it, it, it consists of a battering test suite that runs for 11 hours once you um, have the image. And we had to do lots of uh, contribution upstream to there. It's, it's called uh, Lisa. If you, I think if you look up like on Azure's GitHub, if you look up Lisa, you can find it. Um, we had to do lots of patching to get it to work properly. Um, but apparently they run it against rel images. So I don't envision um, there would be too much, uh, you know, too much uh, more effort or too many problems uh, getting official uh, CentOS images on there. But um, we, yeah, we had to do a lot of work to get the images built properly. And so, uh, like I said, it's, it's not only a matter of getting them built, um, it's also uh, talking to the right people. I mean, I'm sure Jim knows who they are, but um, if you guys uh, need any help contacting them outside of that, um, I'm more than happy to make that connection. It's my team in Microsoft that owns the testing for that. It's yeah. uh, Simon Zhao and a couple other folks. So yeah, yeah. That, that's us. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a great test suite. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it really, like, I think validates like every possible scenario that can possibly happen. Um, but yeah, there is a, a fair bit of work to make sure that uh, all those tests run to completion. Fascinating. I found the uh, GitHub link and dropped it in the chat. I will probably be reading that source code later. It looks like Python. All right. Well, we'll see, we'll see you at the next uh, board meeting, Pat. This is this is one of those things that, um, from the hyperscale six uh, point of view, that I like. I am interested in like having CentOS and CentOS uh, things under the CentOS project be able to shift in Azure. Uh, it'd be really nice if we could do that. Uh, because that is one of those things that, uh, you know, I would like to eventually have hyperscale images in Azure uh, alongside AWS, which are, you know, two clouds that I unfortunately have to be very familiar with. Uh, so it'd be nice to, to be able to do that. Yeah, I think in general, having a process to make it easy for SIGs to produce cloud image artifacts if they so desire would likely be useful. Uh, and if we can pull resources so everybody doesn't have to reinvent how to deal with the various providers, that, that's a lot better for sure. All right. Um, do we have any further discussion there? Moving along, we have our aspirational let's make everything better ticket. Um, and it's, it's worth noting that this meeting with all of these lovely strangers here is, is one of the, the major things that I wanted to accomplish this year um, in increasing the transparency of our governance. So congratulations to all of you here and thank you for uh, making this happen. Um, and, and of course, this is an ongoing thing. We wanna make sure that, that we keep moving in that direction. <clears throat> And that brings us to the end of our open ticket review. Um, I, I do want to note, we, we have an issue listed here on hold, which is regarding the logo. I, I noticed some new activity on the logo design ticket over the last few days. Um, it looks like uh, Mo Duffy has, has stepped in there and is helping out with that. So we have some, some really uh, high power designers that are, that are working that project. So that's kind of exciting. So, so I talked to uh, Mo about, oh, yeah, yeah uh, as well, right? She contacted me, and um, uh, 
I have always been of the, the opinion that I, I don't see any need to change the logo unless there's some reason why we need to. Uh, but I, I've, I've been looking at, the, at the, the places that they're going and they've said that they'll keep the color scheme and some other things and, and they want some rounded, you know, you know, people don't like square things anymore. They want some <laughs> round stuff, right? That's a, uh, I don't have any particular problem with what they're putting together right now. Um, our font, one of the issues is our font is not open source, right? It's not free. And so I don't have a, I don't, I don't have a problem necessarily with switching the font, although the font that they have doesn't look like the font that we have and it's different. Um, I understand the reasoning behind it. So I don't see changing the logo as something that's a huge critical thing that we need to accomplish, but I also don't have any major issues with it, especially since they're trying to keep things fairly close to what we have right now. It's not um, you know, it's not uh, uh, a drastic change by any means. Right. Uh, it's it's still recognizable with what we currently have, right? Um, one of the things I don't like about changing logos is we already have a brand. We've had it for 20 years, and and now we're going to change it. Are people going to become confused? with the change or is it going to be close enough that it just looks like it's been updated and not we're a whole new thing. Right. And so I personally don't have a problem with, with where they're going. It, it's just my input on that. And they have been, they have been reaching out to different people and, and talking. Uh, so they're not doing it in a vacuum and they are working on it. So I mean, that's just my input. From my perspective, as someone who is like working on, on on branding, like as part of producing this the workstation, uh, uh, the hyperscale workstation, the current branding is super problematic because it is it is difficult to use the current logo icon and stuff. Like there are various cosmetic glitches, and there's also certain missing assets that just don't exist because um, producing them with the current framework of the logo as it currently stands is almost impossible to get correct. Uh, and Neon Cats too. Um, but uh, one thing I'm really hoping out of this, um, you know, freshening up of, of our brand that has been going on right now in that, in that particular ticket is that we will have those assets uh, so that, you know, when I'm building the hyperscale workstation, like the logos aren't aren't broken, and that the that things actually look like they make sense. And when when somebody like boots up a, a workstation with CentOS on it, it is one recognizable, and two feels like it's part of a polished product, and or project or deliverable or whatever insert whatever word you want to use here. But um, so like I personally want to see that refreshed stuff come to fruition because the way things are right now, it is super difficult to make, to make things look not broken. Uh, like if you've looked at, for example, the KDE, the word hyperscale workstation KDE version, uh, the default theme, you can't read the CentOS logo because the color schemes are all wrong. And having, and like some of the other branding um, I tried turning it on and it didn't work because there's missing assets because certain configurations just flat out don't exist. These are all things that have been accounted for um, by the folks working on revising the, the, the brand, refreshing the brand. And I want that stuff to land, you know, rel as soon as reasonably possible, because then I can provide a better looking CentOS based thing. So that's my piece on it. That is definitely interesting. Uh, the thing that I keyed in off of there is the uh, not free font. As I, uh, w as part of an open source community, I always get twitchy when not free elements appear anywhere near my stuff. And I would very much like to see uh, 
that's sort of the minimum us to get onto truly open source, open type. Like, I don't actually know what license, I think it's the open font license. Yeah, the Silo now. Yeah, for whatever the open font equivalent license is for any of our textual assets as anything that makes distribution complicated or is not consuming some of the beautiful things that our communities produce just feels sad. Like somebody spent all this time making these beautiful free fonts. We can use them because they're gorgeous. Well, I admit to being a, a gum in the works for this uh, in the past and I'm not, I, I've been convinced that it's a good thing moving forward. So I, I don't have a problem with it. Uh, I don't know, I, I obviously can't speak for anybody else at the, in the meeting, but I don't have a problem with, with moving it I'll, forward. I'll be really happy that uh, we reopen this issue and we put it at the agenda of next week. So it leaves everybody a bit of time to review what was done uh, in the past days. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe we can rediscuss it uh, like uh, in the next agenda. And it lets us time to think about what Neil said as well, because I think this is really uh, uh, interesting to see uh, people that want to use the branding and what limitations they see. So I, I, w I would really uh, see this issue because in the past, I, I didn't care so much. It was not for or against, but I didn't care so much because I, I didn't think it was critical, uh, as you said. But uh, now if we see that our user trying to do some uh, new spins, uh, have problems and things, then I think it's a good time to resume uh, this action. There was a comment made on the ticket um, yesterday or today that they plan to have a proposal to bring to the board next month's meeting. And, that would be uh, lovely. So we can we can look forward to that. Um, yeah. I, also, a, a little anecdote here. Um, I was talking with, um, I, I believe it was Matthew Miller earlier today, and he mentioned that Red Hat Legal encouraged them to continue using the old version of the Fedora logo in order to hang on to the the uh, the copyright around that and and make Fedora Classic. Um, swag, for example, and so that's that's an option that that we would also have. We wouldn't have to we wouldn't have to remove all evidence of the former logo, but we would actually be encouraged to continue using it to maintain that that copyright ownership. Okay, that was one of my sort of tacit areas of concern is I didn't know where the old logo came from. I don't want to tell whoever made it this was beautiful and awesome and goodbye now, because um, if it was a community contribution. The person who put in that work like deserves some love. It's been around for a long time and it's served us really well. Uh, the, the final agenda item is uh, my update. And I, I just have a couple things here which you're probably all already familiar with. Um, a reminder that the dojo call for presentations is still open. We only have four presentations that have been submitted. Um, typically, we get two thirds of the submissions on the day that we close the call for presentation. So I'm not terribly concerned at this point, but uh, that's the status there. I did put out a newsletter yesterday. And the, the third thing is that we expect to have a physical in person presence at Open Source Summit Seattle and at All Things Open in Raleigh. And uh, I was just looking for plane tickets a few, uh, like in the last hour, which is something I haven't done for a year and a half. So I am amazed at your optimism, Rich. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Probably going to cancel at any minute now, right? I would have absolutely no inside knowledge of anything, LF. <laughs> None at all. So that is uh, the end of our agenda. Uh, is there any other business that anyone would like to raise at this point? Uh, I'll use this space as a reminder for the folks watching the recording. If you come up with something that you would like us to put on the agenda, as you notice, we spent most of this meeting going through our ticket system, like log a thing and we will definitely review it.
if we're having a physical presence at all things open, is it uh, is it too late to get uh, the logo printed on some face masks? That was actually one of the questions that came up during the call, um, during the planning call. Um, I, I can look into that. I mean, we were we were talking about Red Hat logo mm -hmm. face masks, but but we can make some CentOS ones as well. I I'll have to look into that to see what's involved. I mean, not critical, but no, no, but it would be cool to have. I, I will confess I deliberately wear most of my open source swag when I'm in public. <laughs> All right. Hearing no more comments, I move to adjourn. Second. Thank you all very much for attending. Thank you.